Welcome. My plan in this short video is to apply the process of conceptualizing client lived experiences to the story of Anika. I think it will probably be more helpful if I ask questions and offer prompts rather than providing my insight into what's going on for Anika as we listen to her story. My hope is that these questions and prompts will get you to think about the process of conceptualizing client lived experiences from a culturally responsive and systemic perspective that broadens your perspective on what might be going on for her and how you might best position yourself to be helpful. Anika is a 42 year old immigrant from India. Hindi is her native language. She struggles with English, which makes it difficult for her to communicate her story to the counselor. My English no good. I used speaking Hindi. With English people, I feel not easy, not comfortable. In this very first statement from Anika is a lot of information. What does Anika need in order to be able to communicate her story effectively? How limiting will her English language skills be? What's your responsibility as the counselor for providing alternatives? For example, a translator. What other means are available to you to ensure that the information that you gather from Anika is accurate and is sensitive to her cultural context when the barriers to English language are present. Anika reports that she is not happy and she attributes this to not making many friends since her move to Canada two years ago. Since move Canada, very lonely, by myself all time, I grateful, so, how you say, fortune, live in Canada, but I wish, happy, in India, so big friends, family, friends always there, I miss, all time. I am so longing to see all. It very hard. I hard time being Canada. No family, no friend. Anika has given some important clues to her struggles. So the questions I'm wondering about are, what is it about the relationship with family and friends in India that is missing in her experience in Canada? What's the connection of these social interactions to how she feels about herself and how she makes meaning in her life. What are the other ways in which this connection with family and friends has brought her support and comfort in the past? What are the ways in which she is now connecting with those family and friends or not? Anika has two children aged 14 and 15. Anika does not work outside of the home and her husband works as an engineer at a cellular phone company. I know mother important job. I the one, I purpose, take care home. Cook. Clean. Take care all children. My mother too, her mother. But still lonely. I used like paint. In India, I do many. And craft. Neighbors all together. In the day, we make craft, all together, always together. Now, tired, not happy. No make drawing, no paint. Not since Canada. I just so lonely always. I miss. Oh no. Not miss India. Miss social. All time, neighbors, friends, families. I try talk to woman in apartment by me. But talking not so good, 
then feel bad. She no knock my door. I stop them. We could look at Anika's situation from a purely psychological and social perspective, but what's the influence of her culture on her expectations around social connection and family connection? How is that different from the experience she is having in Canada? Where might she find those types of social connections? She's introduced the idea of purpose. How does she envision her purpose beyond her role as a mother? And how is the role of mother connected into community? Without community, how is that affecting her sense of self and her sense of purpose and the reinforcement that she would normally have for that role of mother? And what about the painting? The painting seems intimately connected with that social, cultural environment that Anika is longing for. Is that the main focus of the painting for her? Are there other ways in which painting brings out a sense of meaning for Anika? What are the layers of loss for Anika that need to be taken into account? She's talked about loss of identity. She's talked about loss of community. She's talked about loss of cultural connection. She's talking now about loss of her artistic sense of self. How are these integrated? How does she make meaning of those from within her own cultural lens? Anika is Hindu and attends a temple, but it is about an hour's drive away from her home. Her community does not have a significant Indian population. Temple long way drive. No woman close. I just in house all day. No friend, no family to talk. Nobody understand language. Nobody understand what I feeling. No sleep good. Pain in head many days. Try no worry. But so many worry. Children, future, where money, family, all India. Anika has hinted at the interplay of culture and gender when she introduced roles around motherhood and the connection to her own mother and to mothers in her community. Gender now comes to the forefront again as she talks about the loss of connection to women. This seems like an important avenue to pursue. Her connection to women also seems to be intimately connected to religion and her connection to the temple. I'd wanna know a little bit more about this and how this connects into the way in which she makes meaning of her life in Canada. And again, to the losses that she has experienced in this transition. In the previous segment, Anika described her attempts to reach out to a woman in her apartment building. I'm curious about how common her experience of rejection has been. How many times has she tried to integrate into Canadian society? How many connections has she tried to build only to be pushed back because of language barriers or other isms that may exist within her community? Anika has been wondering if she should get a part-time job, but then she feels very anxious when she thinks about doing so. My husband nothing say. Quite. He okay me working. But no help, no encourage. He just home after day work, eat dinner, then go, what he calls. His study. I busy, much busy. Very much to do, all days. But I always said and worry, very worry. The first session ends. The counselor is aware that communication in the session was difficult and she is left with more questions than answers about Anika's situation. What I wonder about as Anika starts to talk about looking for a job is what the purpose is for her in seeking out employment. What are the needs that she's trying to meet? I also wonder about the barriers that she may experience. What are the resources in her area for immigrant women in learning English? Her husband is integrated into the work community, 
And although he doesn't express opposition, he's not an active supporter of Anika as she considers this path for herself. So what are the gender role issues that play in there? What are the cultural overlays of gender expectations that are playing out in the dynamic between the two of them? As I look back on this brief encounter with Anika, I have some other questions about the role of counseling and about my role in Anika's experience. How can I create an environment that is different from and more inviting than what she has experienced in Canada so far? How can I encourage her to express herself and express her cultural context? How can I facilitate the English language challenges she's experiencing? And how many of those challenges are really about Anika's language development, as opposed to the resources that are available to her, and the ways in which the environments are accommodating of her limitations in expressing herself in English? I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that it gives you some things to think about as you contemplate how to conceptualize client lived experiences with a focus on culture and systemic perspectives.